let's bring this thing back around. So obviously you're great at your job. And I'm sure um, after that bus, your name is rising through the ranks. Um, I, I, I want to segue, if if you will, um, Kiki Camarena. 1980, he gets stationed out in Guadalajara, Mexico. D did you know him before he went to Guadalajara, or did you meet him while working in Mexico? I met him before he went to Mexico. Uh, I, I knew him when he was stationed in uh, Fresno, California. His assignment before he was uh, shipped to uh, Guadalajara. Uh, what type of man was he? He was a, a very good, he was like me, a, a, very, a great undercover operative, a uh, big, strong guy. He wasn't a little guy, uh, kind of muscular. Spoke very good English and Spanish. Wrote very good reports. Had a, a lot of a lot of very effective informants. As a matter of fact, when he was picked up, I was using two of his informants on a, on a wiretap operation out of uh, Indio, California. So I had been talking to Kiki right before he got picked up. Mm, and and by picked up, you mean kidnapped? Kidnapped, exactly. Okay. Um. Wow. Let, let's go into this Kiki Camarena story because you're credited um, for, for really solving that crime, if you will. So take me kind of to the beginning. Why was Kiki Camarena picked up to begin with? There are several stories that the government puts out, but here I'm going to tell you the truth. It's undisputable. Nobody can, can dispute the real truth. Before the Camarena case, I was a shooting star. I thought that uh, I was going to at least retire um, a, a deputy or something from the DEA. I was I was very well uh, recognized and awarded. Uh, I was working in uh, out of Mexico. They kidnapped Kiki in '85, and un until 1990, they really had not solved the case. They knew that the Guadalajara cartel members had uh, kidnapped Kiki. They also knew the involvement of the DFS, which is the Directorate of Federal Security, which is RCIA, okay? We knew that elements of, of, of the DFS and the cartel members, along with other crooked cops, had kidnapped Kiki, all right? But they never could get eyewitnesses. I mean, people that were there, they could walk us through the crime. So they pulled me out of Mexico, and I and I talked directly to the director of DEA, and he said, Hector, he says, you know Mexico. That's why we're bringing you in. Can you get us a witness that, can, that was there that can tell us who, why they picked him up, who interrogated him? We really want to know how he died. We want to know all the details of his murder. Can you do that for me? And I said, I believe I can. However, I'm gonna need a big informant budget and I'm going to need the cooperation of INS. He says, what do you mean? What do we need INS for? Immigration and, service. And, and, and for the record, what is INS? Uh, the uh, Immigration Service. Immigration, okay. and, immigration and natural uh, naturalization service, INS. So he says, why do we need the INS? And I said, because if I'm going to bring any witnesses to, to Kiki's murder, we're going to have to bring their whole family into the United States. Because the first time that we bring a witness and he uh, testifies and is identified, his whole family is going to get killed by the cartels. He says, can we get the cooperation of INS to bring not only the witness, but his whole family across to protect him? He said, I think I can do that. And I says, fine then I will get you witnesses. And uh, he said, okay. Then he said, I have another question. He said, uh, could, you, uh, could you kidnap somebody from Mexico for me? And I said, can I kidnap somebody? Uh, he said, yes, I'd like to uh, have one of the perpetrators that we know, a doctor that injected drugs into Camarena, can you, can you get him kidnapped over here? And I said, of course. He says, you can? And I said, yes. 
I need about $250,000 and I can get anybody kidnapped. I can even get the president of Mexico kidnapped if you want. He said, are you serious? And I said, I'm dead serious. He said, okay, we'll get you the money. You kidnap that doctor for us, okay? Um, I said, okay, I will. So it took me about three weeks and I had the doctor kidnapped and brought back to the United States, Dr. Humberto Alvarez Machine, who was a doctor that injected uh, lidocaine and different drugs into Kiki to keep him alive when he was being interrogated, Sean, because the body, when it when it when it experiencing a lot of pain, it shuts down to avoid feeling the pain, and so they brought the doctor in to inject him with lidocaine right into his heart. So when Kiki went un uh, unconscious, they would he would inject the lidocaine and bring him back to consciousness, where they would they could continue interrogating him. So I did. And uh, it was a little time I was able to not bring one witness that was percipient at the scene where Kiki was interrogated. I brought three of them, three uh, pistoleros, gunmen that worked for the cartels that were there that could tell us everything uh, that, that, that Kiki was asked and who interrogated him. Okay, um, I, I want to go backwards. Because you just shared a lot with us, and I want to break this thing down for, for everybody who's watching this. First and foremost, it, the, the narrative has been put out there that Kiki was originally abducted because he was behind the, the burning of a marijuana field that was producing something like $8 billion worth of marijuana annually. Uh, are you saying that that was a false narrative? Partly uh, false because Kiki did not participate in the raids. He he didn't uh, participate in the burning down. You're talking about the Buffalo Fields, Buffalo Chihuahua Fields, where yes. where the cartels had enslaved 7,000 peasants to work uh, in the marijuana fields there. It was a huge uh, marijuana plantation. Kiki's involvement in that was that they needed, meaning the, the Hermosillo DA office in Mexico City, needed a pilot to fly over before they raided it to ensure and photograph the fields, which was a pilot informant that Kiki had by the name of Alfredo Zavala. So they contacted Kiki and they said, could you have Alfredo fly over the fields and photograph him to ensure that basically what our informants are telling us that the fields are there. Alfredo Zavala flew over those fields, filmed them, brought the film back to Kiki. Kiki then took the film to Guadalajara. That was Kiki's involvement in the case. But the Hermosillo DEA agents and, and the Mexican army, along with uh, agents of the DEA of Mexico City, they raided Buffalo. Kiki had nothing to do with the raids. Okay, so, so the narrative that we have all come to know that, that he was, uh, this was his operation. He was behind it. He participated in the raid. That's untrue. That is not true. Kiki had raided another field a month, a uh, year before. He had raided one of Caro Quintero's fields uh, in Fresnillo, Zacatecas. Now that one he participated in, and that was his, his case. And that, he was a case agent on that, meaning that was his case. But the Buffalo fields, the big ones, Kiki did not participate in those raids. Okay, you were brought over to solve this crime. You, you mentioned you were given a budget. And, and I'm not speaking about the budget to, to abduct the doctor. How large was your budget uh, for informants and just running this operation annually? Three million a year. Three million a year? Yes, sir. How, how, did, you, how did you use that money? I, I use it to recruit uh, federal, Mexican federal prosecutors as informants. I recruited army generals as informants. I recruited, I recruited federal agents, Mexican federal agents as informants. I recruited homicide detectives as informants. I had a huge informant base that was giving me information. On average, how, how much does an informant go for at that time? I and mean, we're talking the late eighties, mid eighties, late to, to late eighties, correct? Back then, the the informant that I had at Los Pinos, which is uh, Mexico's White House, 
uh, the, the prosecutor that I had on, on payroll there, I was paying them $10,000 every month. Damn. Every month? Every month. Army generals, I would pay about 5000 a month. Okay, so I got to ask the obvious question. Is there anybody in Mexico then or now that can't be bought? No. Uh, the Mexican police are all on the take. I hired them to do a lot of crazy stuff for me. As the, as the drug dealers buy them to do illegal stuff, murders for them, I would buy them to kidnap people like, like I had the doctor kidnapped. So they're for sale. 